right, we're back. All right, guys, uh, free landscape assessment. Uh, first and foremost, thank all you guys who have uh, responded and wanted a free uh, landscape assessment. We have a number of um, people who said, hey, you know, we would love this. So I'm going to try to do one a week until they're all gone. And we're just going to continue to ask people for their uh, addresses. And we're going to do um, as much as we can during one of these sessions live so you guys can see uh, not only uh, what, it, what it entails to do a, a landscape assessment if you're wanting to do something better for your land, like regenerate it, have a permaculture design, but uh, also so you can see the tool, the, our online landscape assessment tool, which, which you know, takes months worth of work and truncates it down into days, even hours if you try really hard or if you work hard. And I know you guys are hard workers, so hey, let's just get right into it right now. Uh, we're, we're, I randomly just picked another address. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and start. So this address is it's in Kentucky. So if you're wondering what a landscape assessment is, a landscape assessment is an investigation. Uh, it's data mining into what is currently already on the landscape. Uh, the way we do this landscape assessment is we do it in such a way where uh, it's looking at uh, multiple categories of questions that need to be asked so you can have that data and make proper decisions to ensure you don't make any huge mistakes. Like you would just uh, like, like, for example, here in, in Texas, the city of Plano, we're in a vertisol soil type, which is highly expansive and contractive, and we have slab houses here. Um, I'm sure at the time they weren't quite sure what to do, uh, but everybody has problems with their foundation. So to avoid mistakes like that, uh, we want to uh, look at the landscape and uh, read as much data as we can or observe and interact. Uh, so this is part of the observation and even data mining, looking at maps and whatnot. So that's what it is. If you, uh, another way to look at it is if you're a, uh, a doctor, right? Um, you wouldn't just uh, go over to, oh, you know what? I didn't even let you guys see my screen. So if you were a doctor, you wouldn't just say, hey, uh, I'm just gonna start giving a, a, somebody who comes into my office these these drugs without doing proper diagnostics, right? You look at their eyes, their ears, their mouth, their nose, their skin. You'd check their heart rate, their lungs, uh, maybe do blood testing and say, you know, look at their family history. And then you would say, okay, now I've, I've done an assessment. I've, I've got the diagnostics. Now I can give a diagnosis, right? And, and um, you know, sometimes a diagnosis and what we're doing, maybe a design or a strategy or an installation plan uh, sometimes it's nothing uh, in order to regenerate landscape and, and ultimately marry the landscape's uh, restrictions and abilities or or disabilities to what the landowner or the, or the managers of that landscape uh, desire. So that's what we're doing right now. We're going to rock it out and uh, let me switch over to where you see less of me and more of the screen here. All right. Okay, so I pulled up this, the, the, the very first thing I did is I pulled up um, Google Maps. And so this was the address, I just put it in and it found uh, this address here. Okay. So that's the very first thing we do. We at least need to start with an address. Now I do wanna tell you there's, there's really no, there's, there's just no way I can go through an entire landscape assessment during this Facebook Live. Uh, video that I'm doing right here. And if you have any questions while I'm going, I do have another computer over here where I can uh, uh, I can see them. And so from time to time, I might look over and if I have time, answer those questions. But please ask as many as you like. I, I'd love to answer them for you. An open forum uh, live. So um, what we want to do here is, is we, we want to see a, a top point of view. 
and also just kind of see where we're at in the landscape. So this is what it looks like in the maps, and this is what it looks like uh, aerial point of view. And so this is in Kentucky, and I believe this uh, most of this section here is this particular uh, person who sent this address for me. Already it looks beautiful, uh, you know, temperate climate, you can just tell there. Um, so the next thing you'd want to do is you'd want to go to school of permaculture.com and as that loads up we want to then go to uh, hover your mouse over the courses and then go to online courses And then when you're in the online courses, um, we're actually about to be adding more courses. Uh, we're about to start filming a Nicole Rice's uh, fermentation uh, catalog, which is really awesome and in-depth. Multitude of courses coming out here at the School of Permaculture uh, website. Uh, so here at the Landscape Assessment, right, you'll, you'll, um, you'll click Read More. And then <clears throat> this is what the course page looks like. Uh, you can see right at the top, um, you, you got a photo here of what this is about. Uh, retails at 250, uh, 99 bucks, it's a no brainer. Um, but watch the rest of this video because I do want to show you what's up. We'll click add to cart in just a second. Um, and so when you come down, you got tabs. This is the description of the course. You got another little video there you can watch. You can see the curriculum. Uh, these are uh, all the course modules that are in the course. Um, you can actually watch the introduction one for free, uh, which is nice. A little tab about who I am, and you can look at some of the reviews that are on there right now. So um, I've obviously already purchased the course, so when you click Add to Cart, uh, it'll ask you to log in. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and log in from this way. Now, when you uh, log in for your first time and you purchase the course, it'll go through a standard e-commerce. Uh, you can purchase it there, and then you'll come back to this landscape assessment page, and that add to cart will be gone, and it'll show you your progress. Um, so as you scroll down, uh, you'll notice the curriculum ta tab is now open. Click the introduction. It opens up the course player, and you can see here, um, this is how you start the course. So from here, you just hit play, watch the videos as you go through, navigate on the left through each module. And when you're finished, um, when you're finished, I give you two things. I give you a, a complete landscape assessment uh, printable checklist. Um, and then with that, you'll also get the landscape assessment online tool. And that's really what this is about. So let's just launch into that. So as you're finished, you know, obviously you'll scroll all the way down, come to the landscape assessment tool, click the big green button, and it opens it up. You'll use your same login. And here we are, landscape assessment tool. Now, a couple things here. So in your landscape assessment uh, tool, when you open it up, you don't have to have like say you're doing this for other people or you have you know you have uh, your site your parents site uh, or maybe a friend or or maybe you're a professional uh, landscape designer a permaculture consultant landscape architect um, so you'll notice that i've got four in this one uh, we've got one two three four um, and so right now i'm going to go ahead and hit start new landscape oh and by the way you know if you see something like if a link breaks in the site which happens from time to time. There's a lot of them there. Or, um, you know, you just got a way we can improve. We want to hear back from you. So give us some feedback uh, right there. All right, the big red button. Let's start a new landscape assessment. A little bit of air guitar. And it loads up. So this one is going to be, we're going to call this Facebook Live Kentucky uh, Farm. 
it's done by me and it's uh, in the USA you can actually when when these go up you can just actually hit U and it'll go right down to the United States if it's United States as you can see you can do this landscape assessment anywhere in the world we might not have all the links and the resources for that one but it still gives you and qualifies the questions that you need to ask anywhere in the world as you'll see as we continue Kentucky um, We'll come back here. This is the road. And this is the city. Oh, I switched them up. And you know, it's very beneficial to get the latitude and longitude. So we'll enter those in here. But in order to do that, we'll get the road down as Manitou. Click this link. Enter in the address there. And it, look at that, gives me the latitude, latitude, latitude and longitude. So we'll put those in like this. Awesome, first page site information uh, completely done. Let's go ahead and hit continue. All right, so you can see here, uh, right at the top, we were just at the site information, and then we went from site information into the restrictions, and as we hit continue, it'll continue to go on through these 10 different categories. So each category of questions has you know, the, the questions you need to ask. Which direction do the structures face? So this particular one, um, you know, we'll answer that. But I'll, I'll go, we obviously can't do all of like the whole landscape assessment right now during this, but even the restrictions category, this is probably uh, one of the only, it, it's the main category on here where you're not using a lot of resources that's found on the web. You're using the resources usually by picking up the phone and calling the county uh, to find out information you need. For example, what are your building code restrictions? Uh, we may be able to check uh, online uh, looking at the, uh, the, co uh, the code for the, the building restrictions, but chances are it's going to be a lot easier to call them up and find out. And then they, they might obviously email you the code as well. So uh, I'm going to use this particular um, uh, uh, category to show you guys how the tool works. So we've got a... Uh, question here which direction do the structures face and so I'll go back to the map top view go ahead and kind of zoom in here and there's a number of um, of structures on this particular landscape so I'm not sure uh, which all are this property owners I literally only started with an address so I'm going to uh, say this is one and this is also one. So I'm just going to call this the house and call this the barn. Whether that's the case or not, I'm not sure. Um, we could even kind of see the road view, which is really nice. But this place is gorgeous. Absolutely. Oh, look at these just rolling hills here. Okay, actually, no. So look, this is great. This is the, uh, a barn or, or a garage or a workshop, most likely a barn. And uh, this is the house back here. So let's jump back. There we go. Oh. Well, I guess that's the closest it's going to let me get um, on this particular one. And, that, and that's fine. All right. So... If we look at it from the top, what I'll do is I'll do a couple things. Um, is you can't see my screen right now, but I'm going to hit or my my the keyboard, but I'm going to hit the print screen. Now I'm on a PC, so if you're on a Mac or your iPad or your iPhone, it's going to be different every time you do it. Uh, or, or for those particular devices. So on a PC, uh, which is what I'm on right now, I'm just gonna hit the print screen. I'm gonna come back to the assessment 
and then I'm going to right click. So well, let's talk about it. We've got which direction do the structures face? Um, and so right after that, that's the question. And then you get the resources. Well, this one says use a compass or a compass mobile app or, you know, look at this aerial point of view and we can see we got a barn and then we have a house. Uh, if we come back, south is obviously um, the bottom part of the screen. So it looks like the barn, it was facing south and it looks like the house, which was here, it's facing east. So we'll put barn south and house east. And then this, we got two fields under that. We've got an upload field. Or we, if we already had photos, we can upload them there. And then we have a crop tool. So this is uh, nice. So since I've already hit print screen, I can hover my mouse over it and hit control V and inside of the landscape assessment tool is the crop tool here. So this is really nice. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take a snapshot of, um, of, of the aerial view and now this has uploaded that snapshot, how we cropped it uh, into the uploaded documentation. Really nice. Um, we're going to skip over building code restrictions and any permits that are needed. Um, we're going to skip over septic codes, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the word test here. I'll show you why in just a second. Um, zoning ordinances, we'd need to know that. Uh, call the county uh, or the municipality. Uh, utility easements, you know, I, I don't have a survey or a plat on here. I'm going to assume, because I don't see any heavy infrastructure, that they probably have some type of electric power line that's going overhead. So they probably have an electrical easement. They're probably using a septic tank. Uh, I'll know more when I see the soils. And let's just say um, there's a, uh, we'll, we'll leave it at that, electrical easement. So we'll come down here. There we go. We've got an electrical easement on, on there. Uh, they're not in an HOA. Well, let's say no HOA. Um, any permits needed and so so on and so forth okay so I'm gonna uh, go ahead and hit continue you see it's moving me right along but I want to use this moment for a second and go back to the home um, of the tool and you can see first there was four now there's five there is the Facebook live Kentucky farm here now, this is the one we're working on right now um, you see when it was created when it was updated and these are the options so I can edit and I can delete so I'm gonna go ahead and click edit and it's gonna take me right back to the tool it takes me back to the to the site information I'll click continue and this is where we're at and then we're gonna hit uh, let's go ahead and hit print Now here, um, what you can see is it's printed, uh, it's created a PDF that you can print out and you can also save. You can hit the download link here. And um, it starts with, you know, it tells you what it is. Here's the site information. This is the info from the first tab. And then it goes into the restrictions tab. Now you can see here was the first question, right? The barn south, house east, and it, and it printed out this particular photo that we used. And you can see here too, we got septic codes, we hit test. And there were a couple other questions in between the septic codes and the HOA. And you'll notice that it didn't print those out. So when you finally get to your final document and you wanna print it out for yourself, I mean, you're looking at a minimum of 15 pages, if not you know, more close to 30 to 60 pages with all the images that are here. Uh, it is not full of a lot of questions uh, and a lot of trash uh, text that is not being utilized. So it makes a ton of sense here um, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and just X out of this. There's no need to print right now, but you can see this tool offers you a wide variety of, of powerful uh, abilities to collate all this information. Clicking on over to climate data. 
we are going to look at um, this question, average annual rainfall. So the way we would do this before is first you got to know what questions to ask, and then you got to go research somewhere, and then you've got to collate that data in a Word document or Google Doc, um, and usually it's a lot of text, and man, it was just tedious. Uh, it, it was really tedious, so uh, I, I got tired of doing that myself, and uh, I wanted, uh, I wish there was a tool out when, when I first started doing assessments. Uh, so we just went out and created one and making it available to you guys uh, to make it um, make your lives a lot easier. And so everybody can have um, an assessment on their landscape uh, across the globe and, and do it for very inexpensive. So you have that data that you can start with to, to, to move from and really do a good job in your design and your installation. So on this question, now the resources, this one's different. We got six different resources here. Now she's in Manitou, um, Kentucky. So I'm gonna come over here and uh, say she wasn't, say she was in the world. So we can look at this first link. And here's some world averages across the, the land. So she's in this region here, this 38 and a half to 58 inches or 975 mil to almost 1500 mil. It's kind of a, a, a broad scape. You kind of got to look at it and say, okay, uh, there's other ways to do it. And we, and we labeled them here. So say you're in the U.S. Um, let's click another map. And here we go. We got a detailed map that's going to show me. Here's Kentucky. And Kentucky has two colors of its own, this, uh, this middle sh shade of green and the light shade of green. So we can come down here and take a look. Um, Right, so she's, she's you know, between 35 to 50 inches of rain. So what we'll do is we'll print that, uh, use the print screen tool, come down here, and we'll crop out just what we need, which is this image. And, you know, let's go a step further. So not just leave her uh, that map, let's give her some data as well. So I'll click this bottom link, which opens up another resource. And we'll go to Kentucky. She was in Mana 2, and I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering that town. So if you guys are from that town and I'm completely butchering it, I apologize. I'm from Texas. We barely speak English. All right, so Mana 2 is not in here. Um, so we'll zoom out. And so there's Madisonville, Providence and Wrightburg or Slaughters. So it looks like she's a little closer to Providence than Madisonville. Uh, let's take a look. Well, here's Providence right here. And Madisonville is not in there. So we'll come over to Providence, click that. And you can see she's got almost 45 inches of rain. We can put that information in there. It's pretty close to her city. And you know, let's not leave it at that. Let's take a screenshot of this because this data is, is pretty nice. This gives you, oh, by the way, on the tool, you can also zoom in a little bit. Yeah, just like that. And what we'll do is we'll take a screenshot of this data. And what this is, is this is the average annual uh, precipitation by month. So in January, three inches, February, 3.6, March, 3.9. I mean, these guys are sitting really nice, a good temperate uh, climate zone for their, uh, for their rain. So now we have that data. Let's come down to the 100 year rain event. Um, this information is a little bit difficult sometimes to find. Uh, so we might wanna Google or um, I, I put an article in here that you guys can read that helps you identify this information. So it's, it takes a little bit longer to grab that one, so I'm just gonna pass over that one for right now. Um, and, and you let me stop myself there for a second. So I'm flying through this, for this only for the sake of Facebook Live, right? If this was uh, your landscape or my landscape, uh, I, I, I would highly recommend, and, and I do slow down and take the time 
to really read all this documentation. So it's one thing to have it, but then you get to process it and, and, and digest the information. Then you're ready to, to kind of go through an analysis process after that. So once you grab the data, right? So our process kind of in consulting is, you know, we have an interview, uh, we talk, we look at desires, look at capabilities. And then we have a landscape assessment and potential testing. And then we've got to like, you know, earlier when, or when we're doing the landscape assessment, we've got the lens on of a physician or a doctor. Uh, then when you're doing the, the design, you put the lens on of like a pastor. So you, you marry this landscape assessment with like the desires of uh, the property owner. And, and hopefully, you know, you, you make a good marriage and you give it a blessing in the name of Jesus and, and, and everything is awesome. Um, and so that's why you do this landscape assessment is so you can do yourself a favor and ensure that, that you do doing your homework, looking at all the data you possibly can before you advise or you do anything big uh, like putting in a dam or, or a house or even swales. Okay, so um, the next question here is, is your property in a, in a floodplain? So I'll click there. So that's, isn't this awesome? So it gives you the questions you need to ask, and then it gives you the resources right there where you need them, opens it up what you need, and then you continue on to go into grabbing the data, and then it collates it all for you. So let me come back to this um, map from Google and back to the floodplain map and FEMA has done a good job you can see here anywhere that's this blue section there are floodplains in those areas uh, so we'll hit search because I put the address there and I like to actually uh, look at the view the uh, view the web map I like this map better than the one that's right here so I'm going to come and click this one, and it's going to say, hey, you're leaving FEMA, going somewhere else. I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. So this is the ArcGIS. So her property is like right here, and fortunately it's got this. Uh, there we go. So this is the address. Now there's a creek that goes out through here. So, um, and I haven't looked at the topography yet. Um, very well looks like it might start here and go that way but you can see she almost has a floodplain coming up into this area so it's like right on the the cusp Let's see if I zoom in a little bit more yes yeah, so sometimes you zoom in the aerials uh, oh no there it is cool yeah you can see right here so this, she's not in a floodplain unless this tree line here is part of her property so what I'll do is I'll zoom in one more time And I'll take a snapshot of this. Oh, I'll zoom out. I zoomed in just a little too close. And we'll take a snapshot of that. Come back over to the landscape assessment. I could zoom in here on the landscape assessment a little. Oh. Went a little too far. And then kind of cut down. Go ahead and add the uh, the FEMA map that is there, so it could be seen. And so, from uh, my aerial point of view, at least, not walking on the property, I say not in floodplain uh, and then that'll print out a, uh, that image as we can see so we've got an average annual snowfall let's go to um, let's look at the snowfall map so she's over here in Kentucky so she's looking at you know between 12 and 24 inches a year roughly um, even down to you know up to just 12 inches a year so not a huge snow load praise the Lord I'm from Texas we like the heat we like the heat I'm 
this crop tool just really makes it amazing. Uh, just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I'm just telling you from doing many of these, it just speeds things up. So we'll just say uh, 12 to 24 inches here. What's your average frost depth? Click that one. And you can see here, again in Kentucky, so she's kind of in this 15 inches, 15 to 20 inch range. Uh, and you definitely, you know, uh, want to know that information for sure, uh, especially if you're building a house on that property. Um, you want to make sure your footings are below that frost line so frost isn't creeping up from, from under your house. So. So that was 15 to 20 inches. I'm going to go ahead and put 20 inches here. So let's overshoot it. Um, put that extra five inches in there. Not a huge deal, uh, potentially on cost. But you know, it's it's it, again. So this landscape assessment is an investigation. It's seeing what's already here. Now it's too early, in my opinion, to take this information and go uh, and analyze it. And so okay, well, boom. But, but every one of these has a why. Like, why are you uh, asking this question? And so this one is you, you need to know so you don't make a huge mistake and put in a 12-inch a footer where you have a 36-inch frost line. And all of a sudden, you know, you've made a house, uh, but it's exceptionally difficult to heat. And if it was a slab, your slab uh, may just crack from the, uh, from the heaving of the, of the water as it defrosts and as it thaw, uh, thaws and as it freezes and uh, just a, a, a lot of problems there so you, but we're not there we're not in the analysis stage we're just in the data mining stage right this this observation and and taking a, a collection of information that is there if we look at the historic first and last frost days uh, we've got a couple of, of ways to do it i really like uh, dave's garden uh, link so as you open dave's garden you say hey what's the zip code there so 42436 click go and this is great so this gives me some information right off the bat so in Mani Manitou, um, each winter on average, the risk of frost is from October 24th through April 9th. Almost certainly, however, you will receive frost from November 9th through March 29th. And you're almost guaranteed that you will not get frost from April 20th through October 7th. So the frost-free growing season is around 198 days. So she's sitting real pretty. Um, you need to know this information on average because it gives you your outside growing range, right? So tomatoes sometimes can take 180 days to produce. I, I still got tomatoes in our front garden that we put in in spring, and they're still producing uh, tomatoes right now. I have green tomatoes on them right now. So we'll take this info and we'll paste it into here, um, clean it up a little bit maybe. And um, we can also grab a screenshot of this data and it gives gives you dates on different temperatures and your uh, percentages so we'll put that in there just for some extra data if we need to pull that out at another time your average temperatures. Actually, if we go back to, uh, well, we can uh, click that bottom link again here. Go back to Kentucky. And back again into uh, Providence. And it tells me my average high and my average low, which is, so what we can do is we can grab this data. We can paste that data there and also what we can do is do another screenshot because over here it gives us the high and the low 
by month again, which is very nice. So you're gathering all of this data. And, and you know, in all honesty, I mean, look, if we look at this bar over here, we're only in the top quarter of just the column of climate. So there's, you know, and we're still in just the weather uh, and land data in, in the climate section. So there's like subsections within this one, all right? We look at the longest period without rain, the summer and winter solstice angles, the spring and fall angles, and the shadow lengths for all of those. Those are going to really help in growing, right? Your first and um, last frost days are, 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 um, are there. You know, all of this information, uh, climate so far, is definitely uh, uh, important for designing your property so you don't make big mistakes and you don't, you know, oftentimes plant the wrong thing or, or design a house that's in the wrong climate. Uh, and, and, and to learn more, obviously, you need to take a permaculture design course. That's really kind of the basis of, of this whole construct. Uh, and then once you know, uh, then you know, doing something like this says, oh, okay, I get it. I'm gathering the data so I can do make better decisions. Uh, it, it's just fascinating. So we'll we'll do prevailing winds. Right, click click this one here. And. Uh, So it's saying kind of Morgan Field is the closest uh, airport weather station. Right, so this gives us a lot of graphs and a lot of data on this particular site. And we might want to combine different sites, graphs, and data per each question. Uh, for the sake of time here, uh, I know this is a good one that shows me uh, wind. So I'll come out and it, here's, a, here's some good information. So the average hourly wind speed is experienced significant seasonal variations over the course of the year. The the windier part of the la the windier part of the year lasts for 7.3 months from October 14th to May 22nd. Uh, and the average wind speed during that time is 8.4 miles per hour. And the windiest day of the year is March 31st, with an average hourly wind speed of 10. Point eight miles per hour so the calmer time of the year lasts for 4.7 months from May 22nd to October 14 and the calmest day on average is July 29th with an average hourly wind speed of 6.1 so this is great information for speed right do you need wind breaks uh, wind buffers or do you need wind funnels uh, to capture more wind during different times of the year so you're looking for a windmill so you created a wind break that pushed air up into your windmill during uh, times of the year when you need it. Say you need a lot more energy during the winter for uh, heat. If you didn't design your house uh, to create its own heat uh, and you wanted to use wind power to do that, uh, you can potentially create a wind uh, break that purposely pushes air up into a windmill during uh, that cold time of the year, knowing this information. Go down a little bit, uh, it also says the wind is most often from the north for uh, 1.4 weeks from uh, February uh, 11th to February 21st. So this information is good, I'm going to grab it. Uh, and again, I'm only going fast because I'm on Facebook Live. And then it has this graph here that shows the wind direction. Uh, so I would say, you know, we're, we're looking at from April to July. You know, this, this summer uh, prevailing wind is going to be the south. But this one's pretty consistent uh, all four directions uh, the entire year. So pretty hard to diagnose that one to one particular, um, uh, one particular cardinal direction. But it's, it's, it could be... A, it could be potentially problematic because there's so much uh, directional variance happening with the wind there. And there we 
go. So you know what we can do? I can save this document. In fact, any, any of these top three buttons, if you click them, you'll see that it saves. And then we'll print, and let's see just so far what this kind of looks like. Again, the site information here. You got the restrictions. The climate, and we're in the weather data. Floodplain, snowfall, frost depth, historic first and last frost days, average temperatures, prevailing winds, and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to go ahead and just skip over um, because I get I need I need to um, uh, work on another project actually right now. So we can go into topography. And I have a lot of data here, uh, especially for the U.S., uh, to find topography for, uh, for the U.S. Um, there's 10-foot contours across the whole U.S. And a lot of states or a lot of counties uh, have 2-foot contours, which are obviously a lot more ideal. Um, and, you know, I'm not even going to get into to this right here, but this gets into contour maps, your topography, the watershed. Um, where water is entering and leaving your property, your hot, your elevations, where are the ridges and the valleys of your landscape, your key points if they are on your landscape, and um, uh, oh, it's actually we get to water. Yeah, I thought aquifers was in there too, but that's actually in water. Uh, and you know we get to photography. I'm just going to go ahead and skip over here into soils. Uh, just because I want to offer um, this particular Kentucky person a good bit of information here. So uh, we got the soil horizon. Uh, the soil horizon is basically uh, looking at the different stratas going down into the earth. Um, and it's without actually doing a boring hole into the earth, you can't see it. Uh, there is a way to kind of get it, and I'll show it to you. So we might need to skip this one for a second and, and look for the series of soil that is on site. So for this one, we'll click the Web Soil Survey right there. While that's loading, I'm going to clean up some of these. And what we'll do is we'll come down. Once you've opened the Web Soil Survey, uh, this pops up. So you'll want to come and grab that address again. Put the address in this address field, click view. And it's showing me here, um, it's showing me here that uh, this, uh, there's a little orange crosshair here, it's hard to see, but this is the, uh, the area that we want to look at. So to make that my area of interest, I'll just choose a rectangle right now and kind of put it over that whole area. Now that is larger than her her property, but that's okay. So once I have this area of interest, I'll click over to the soil map. And, and by the way, this tool comes with an online course. So the online course, I walk you through this and I show you the different, how, how to use this tool. Because this, this is from the NRCS. It's very useful for giving you information. Um, so we can see here, this was a total of 100 acres that I, that I put into the area of interest. And the big one, by far, 50% of the soil type is this FDE, the Frondorf Lindbergh Silt Loam. Uh, and its unit symbol is FDE. Uh, so here's the FDE over here. But that might not be the major one on her. Yeah, no, it is here. It's FDE here as well. So yeah. So we'd want to look at all of these, but for, uh, for the sake of Facebook Live, um, I'm just going to look at this Frondorf. So we'll click it. And you can see this got information. But before we get into that, uh, let me come over here and copy just that name. Come back over to Google. Actually, let me just do it. 
paste that and then type in soil series after it. Right. So frondor, so it's actually two types of uh, soil series. So what we'll do is we'll, you would do this for both of them, but for right now I'm just gonna put Frendorf in. And you can see here Frendorf, there's one here and it has some good information. I'm gonna click it and this is perfect. Um, this gives me a soil series information data um, from the NRCS of what this Frendorf is all about. So, uh, look, the Frendorf series consists of a moderately deep, well-drained soil formed in a mantle of loss uh, over residuum from acid sandstone, siltstone, and shale. Slopes range from 6 to 60%. Near the type location, the average annual temperature is 57.9 degrees. Okay, and they give some information there. So it's taxonomic class. It's fine loamy, mixed active, mesic, <laughs> yultic, haplodalfs. Uh, so I just want to tell you, when you start getting into soils, it's a whole nother language. You're going to need to pull out a dictionary or, or the web and read what these are. And when I get over into the taxonomic value here in just a second of, of soil, I'll show you some uh, resources that are, that are within the online landscape assessment. Um, but as for right now, I do wanna say, hey, look, let's just look at this here. So this is the typical pedon. And so this isn't exactly a, um, a soil horizon, but it can be. So it's basically saying here on this top soil from zero to one inches, it's dark grayish brown, it's silt loam, weak fine granular structure, very friable, that's really nice. Uh, many fine roots, uh, very strongly acid, abrupt smooth boundaries. So it may be too acid and there could be problems in acidic, um, uh, acidic soils. So, um, however, most gardens do like that six point five to six point nine range but neutral is not bad and, you know, and depending on what crops you got they got it but again i don't want to get into analysis right now we're just taking the information so we'll grab this here and we'll copy that data come back and then go ahead and come back up to the horizon and i'll paste that there so there's a way to kind of get a soil horizon within looking at the series of what we're doing um, you see, it, it tells you more information here. There's the A, this was the A, and then the next one's the E, or the alluviation layer, the E horizon, it has a hue to it. So what I wanna do is I just wanna copy all of this, and you definitely wanna read it. Go down to the next one, the soil type, paste it into, um, I accidentally clicked that button, paste it into this uh, section there And so now we have all the information on that particular series. Um, before I leave that section, let's come back here where we got the name on this. And let's just read over what it says here during the maps. So here um, you can see it's, call, uh, it's, it's broken down into sections. So FDE, the Frondorf Lindbergh. Um, this first section just gives you, it's kind of like climate data. And here, it, they even classify it for you. It's not prime farmland. Uh, that may be the case, uh, considering that farmland in that part of the country is really prime. But I've seen soils so far from what I've seen here that are much worse, that have had a very high success rate of regeneration. I mean, even here in the Blackland Prairie of Texas, uh, we're not fa prime farmland, but uh, here they've got a, a fine uh, loamy sand and, and that's usually ideal you know there's never a, a carte blanche of one thing but uh, I, I think it's got a very good potential for regeneration just and quickly because we're working with a loamy uh, silty soil so if we come back the landform is hills uh, as we can see even in the photo it's got rolling hills to it um, and, and remember, this is not this specific site it's telling you about. This is saying, in general, for these types of soils, these are the, 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 the patterns of what's usually there in that particular soil type. Um, it even kind of tells you where this comes from. So a, a non-calcareous loss over loamy, loamy resid, 
residuum, yeah, excuse me, uh, which what the soil series told us as well. It has a small um, soil horizon here. So from zero to 15 inches, you get a silt loam. From 15 to 20 inches, you get a silty clay. And from 30 to 40 inches, you got unweathered bedrock. So you're looking at um, you know, your depth of restrictive feature from 20 to 40 inches there. Uh, it's, it's well drained. Um, the runoff's really high. Your depth to your water table is more than 80 inches. And it says the, the water storage and the profile is rather low. So, um, you're in the hydrologic soil group uh, C. If you want to know what that means, you can copy that information, paste it into your deal. Need. <clears throat> and so, the, the USDA has their Hydro, Hydrology National Engineering Handbook, and Chapter 7 has to do with hydrologic soils. Um, and here at the very beginning, you'll see there's just four, A, B, C, and D, and they'll tell you what, uh, what it is. And so this one's a C. Yeah, um, right here, the second section. Right, four groups, A, B, and then here's C. Moderately high runoff potential when thoroughly wet, and so on and so forth. Obviously, read it. So, um, we could continue getting into the soil taxonomy, getting into the microorganism levels and the different testings. Uh, matter of fact, this is where it starts your testing. You want to look at the microorganism load, the inorganic levels. <clears throat> so, if you're doing a Reams test or uh, a any kind of test where it's looking at a uh, periodic table of elements that are potentially in the so that are in the soil, and the Reams test says you know which ones are actually available. Um, it'll it'll look look also at the cations and the cation exchange that's there. Your pH, your heavy metals, uh, your organic matter, any chemicals if you can get that, and toxins if you can get that information. So the next set of testing is is geotechnical testing. Uh, which you want to look at if you're doing any kind of structures or, or dams. Um, you want to look at uh, water holding capacity and the proctor compaction testing. Um, so the one thing is it might be difficult to find uh, places that will do that. So in the tool, uh, what I did is I, uh, <coughs> it's located on our website. Uh, within the tool, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers actually does a number of testing, but they oftentimes don't do it in-house. They need laboratories state, uh, United States wide. So they use uh, validate, they, they have to be validated up to a certain point for the Army Corps of Engineers to use them. So inside the tool, there's an amazing link here. You just tell it what uh, state you're in. Here's Kentucky. Um, all right, so here's AMEC. Uh, it's located at 1103 Blue Glass uh, Parkway and they do these types of testing and uh, you can just Google them and find their phone numbers. So that is all I have time for today. This was an impromptu one. I wasn't uh, gonna go here at the beginning, um, but I ended up, uh, I was gonna wait till Friday, but um, due to certain circumstances, we're still gonna have one Friday, but I was uh, coming over here uh, oh, tonight and uh, wanted to um, show you guys this awesome stuff. So uh, you guys are awesome, you're amazing. If you like this tool, well actually first off, if you would like a free landscape assessment of your property, and on Fridays we'll have more time and we'll get slow down a little bit more, uh, we can go over your property and see the different, uh, the data and the information that's there. And if you think this cool is awesome, obviously all you got to do, go to schoolofpermaculture.com. You can get the online landscape assessment and you guys take, take off, just rock on and um, it'll be rad. So the more people who use it, you know, uh, tens or maybe hundreds of thousands is what we're trying to get to. Um, so <clears throat> we can have massive um, uh, information from a permaculture lens, people wanting to regenerate their landscape. So eventually this may turn into an app where all you got to do is say, find my location, boom, and it gives you all the closest data it can for you. Um, so 
more people use this, the more uh, the quickly the quicker we can get there. So I love you guys. You're awesome. If you got any questions, just post them in the comments. Put a blessing on you in the name of Jesus, uh, and uh, you guys have a good night. Oh, is that my baby girl?